You sure you're going to behave yourself because you love give trouble, you know? Okay, so the next person I'm going to introduce to the sta stage, he's an artist, upcoming artist, but he's also Shaggy's son. Could we give it up for Rob Banks, please? Rob there, big up Rob. Well, look like a superstar, just like him, Puffa, do I right, represent him from Canada, another one of my co-workers, another radio broadcaster. Please give it up for my brother, Specs the Boss, T-Dot. And I think we're going to get the biggest round of applause right now. God will know so they're like 20 deep in here, representing Guadeloupe. Could you please give it up for Kikora as well? See that? The Lord got boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Sparks, it's all yours. All right, so good afternoon and welcome everybody to IMC. And my name, as he said, is ZJ Sparks. You probably call me Sparky Baby. Today we have a very interesting panel and we're going to be looking at media mastering the evolution. Basically, we're going to look from them time there, from we used to have papyrus to now, and how it relates to how we deal with music. And I'm very happy to have this esteemed panel. DJ Trini is going to be joining us much, much later on. First up, though, I really want to speak with you, Specs. You've had a number of years in media, especially in Canada, when we think of a Canadian ambassador for reggae and dancehall music, that would be you. So I would love for you to speak on how media has changed, the musical landscape for the distribution of music and getting music into the ears and into the minds of person. how has it, persons. How has it changed over the last few decades? Um, well, as far as for the Canadian perspective, probably every perspective um, is changing also in the way of it's being delivered, the way it's being presented, um, the way it's being marketed, and the way that we access it also. Um, as far as uh, the way that it's being uh, distributed before we'd be able to get them from a uh, record pools and from the direct labels themselves. But now it's like at a time where, because of the digital streaming and the access to being able to get them straight on your phone with the digital streaming platform is now, it's almost to a point where like you have to like use, utilize social media in order to find out what's hot. And then you go and you search for it. So it's not as if we get it as easy as before because nowadays with, um, especially a lot of the labels them and the artists them, they're big now. They have their Instagrams. They have all their followings. They don't really need us, especially as radio people and presenters anymore because they feel they can present it themselves. So it's changing that aspect that before when it was given to us or brought to us, now we have to go out and try to find it. And uh, it's one thing that when you do find it, it's kind of hard to even find out the name of the artist, the name of the song, the name of the producer because we don't have those record labels anymore where you can read it and you can see the title and the producers and you know the experience isn't even as as great as the one time before because now you have to instead of being the person receiving it with all the information you have to be the one to go and get it and then get the information to distribute it so that's one of the major changes i've seen all right, you know, I was going to save Rob for third, but let me just get to you, Rob, because I would love it from an artist perspective. A lot of artists are of the impression that gatekeepers are not important. They feel like gatekeepers hold them back. Here we have Specs saying, boy, in the older days, it was really easier to get the music to identify and put the music out there. In the new space that we have with the new media, especially with the utilization of playlists that you can curate, that your fellow artists who are probably in a camp with can curate, and the algorithms will help you to curate, and also social media platforms. Do you think that this is better for artists nowadays, or does there need to be some form of combination of traditional and new media? Um, I think it's a catch-22, in a sense, because with finding new artists online, like you were talking about, and the gatekeepers, like you were saying, a lot of these gatekeepers, they overlook certain artists that are doing their thing and that are actually pushing music and innovating and making something new that's cutting edge. And more so drawing for something that they know is already hot. You know what I mean? Or an artist that is on their second or third project or something like that. So I think it's kind of a double-edged sword in a way. Do you think that means 
the younger artists need to build stronger teams in order to get 100%. the music into the ear because 100%. even though we have new media, you still have now a lot of competition because now the world comes to you all at once. Is it a weakness on the part of the teams of the artists 100%. or is it that the other artists have worked much harder and have, and have established their brands or the, or the DJs are just lazy? I think, it's, I think it's, it's both of those things that you said, all of those things that you said. The team has to be strong, and this is speaking from experience, as me as an artist, I started doing my thing by myself because I didn't want to be cast within the, the shadow of my father, even though he's my best friend, I love him to death. I wanted to make something for myself, you know what I mean? So starting out, I had no team. Even back there, when we were all sitting back there, it's just me and my one manager. Even now, we just, out of 10 years of doing this, I've just gotten PR maybe last year or something like that. And these kinds of things, you can't, these, these young artists, they don't know that. You know what I mean? They think they make that one song and it goes viral and then that's it. And then somebody from a label is just going to come get them. It doesn't work like that. You have to have your team. You have to have a good infrastructure. You have to make sure that the people and the relationships that you're building they're with genuine people that will actually care about the music that you're trying to put out. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. Now, Kikora, you come to us as not only someone in media, but also as an artist. So you have that kind of hybrid blend about you. Talk to us about how important it is to tie in new and traditional media. Totally. Um, coming from the vinyl side, where you were able to see who's singing, who's, that's why I'm coming back to TJ's Park, who's the artist, who's the composer, who's the bass player, to now streaming and you receiving music on your phone, overloading of music because there are so many of them, it's becoming difficult. And when you hear you have also the underground scene in which, which is popular because that's where everybody goes, not the mainstream. Okay, and having said that, as a radio host myself, I have to go like you on YouTube, who's that, what's that, trying to find out. But I have to say, from the media perspective and from the artist perspective, when I had my song, my first song out, it was the hardest. I could not find a phone number, an email address for any radio or TV station to try to send a video clip or to say, here, I've got this song, it's during the confinement, I've got some sunshine for you. Can you want to hear it? I could not find anything. So on both sides, there was a problem because as media, you don't have a special person always that can stream all the music or that has an email address. You got new songs, send it to this number, to this email address, or send us your, your bio, or whatever. You don't send the tapes or demo tapes like before. So as a DJ or as a radio host, I have to hear what the people are listening to, but also being in a French Caribbean island, I have to portray my show is called Caribbean Groove, in which the aim is to link our sister island with music, culture, history, art, and food. Because we go easily to Miami, we go to New York, we go to Paris, but we don't go to St. Lucia, we don't go to Dominica, we don't know what they eat, or their culture, or their music. So it's the same thing in the music industry. I had to find out about the Denry Salmon called Team Fox Moto. I have to call Michel Montano when we talked about Zouk, and his append of music, a uh, rhythm, and I said, Michelle, this is Zouk. And he said, no, it's Soka Slow Down. So to come back to find out who's up, who's best, who's not good, and who's to bring up, you have to push the new artist. So sometimes I just go and I say, oh, this is, uh, I work with uh, Judy Broadley and I thank her, uh, Shamila, I had to introduce her, people didn't know in the French islands, but it would be good to do the other way around as well, to exchange our music, because it still comes from Africa, I have to say. I, I joined a sister earlier, uh, dance, reggae, all this is still roots music from home, and Afrobeat didn't look at Caribbean music, I believe. I think Afrobeat has always been there. It was not called Afrobeat, maybe. Salif Keita, all those people, Manu Dibongo, all these people used to do Afrobeat before. Bernard Boy didn't invent, he invented the whole marketing behind it. The song is good, I respect that. You have to have the good song. But how a DJ in Curaçao is gonna hear about the latest Jamaica song if he hasn't got a strong team around him to really 
boom out all that music. So as an artist, how do you contact the media? But as a media, how do you know? We have such an influence, and we also have our hands tied to what we can play on radio, on certain radio, as in for lyrics or content. But it's all based about education. Music is a way of message, right? Whatever the language, whatever is soca, whatever is denso, whatever is zouk, it's still a message that the artist is trying to portray about his feelings. And as DJ Sparks was saying, you have to dig. Specs. Specs, sorry, I beg your pardon. You have to dig to find what music to put it on the radio. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult because the overwhelming of all those social media, you have an advantage now. You can reach, you can target, you can details. I want to target young people that age. And you have all the insight on those, this little gadget. They give you all the information. You have the analyst, analysis, I beg your pardon for my English. You have the analysis of who likes what, what's the trend, what's good, but demand, supply, or supply and demand, in which way? Do you understand? So our music is all the same, but I think we need to improve our communication. Needs help, needs support, needs strong surrounding and PR. You said after 10 years, you got somebody in PR. Not everybody has the financials to be able to launch. And if you haven't got somebody, like you said, that said, oh, he's got talent. Let me give him a chance. So it's, I think both words have to be improving and communicating more. And I, if there's more media in the audience, please put up things where artists can send their music to you. Okay. Specs. Uh, would you say that there is a decline in the importance of traditional media? Well, that's what they're saying, especially when it comes to like no, radio. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that the revolution will not be televised. It will be on the radio. You know, anytime something bad is going on in the world or whatever the case is, everyone turns to radio first of all. So I always say radio is very, very important. It will always be here. As much as they say, oh, it won't be, I believe in my heart that it will be because... You know, when certain things are shut off and lock off and, you know, you can't get access to certain things, you know, that radio with the antenna will still be working with those simple little stations that are on FM and AM dial, if you guys remember what that is. So. <laughs> no, 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 that you're working in an age where we have new media and you're still in traditional media while incorporating new media. How are you cementing music in the minds of persons so that can, they can remember someone like a Rob Banks? Well, um, nowadays, it's a matter of them wanting to cement themselves. You know, a lot of the artists nowadays, they'll send you their music. It won't be labeled properly. They won't have the proper information on it. And it doesn't even look appealing. So it, it's all a presentation thing, same way, too. So the artist, first of all, has to grab the attention of the person that's going to be playing their music. You know, so that's a very, very first thing. Then, you know, when listening to the music, and I said this last year, too, a lot of the artists, them, they put their tracks on a CD or on a... USB device, and they save all their, so their best songs for last. We don't have time to listen to all those tracks to get to your best song last, so you gotta present it properly and put your best songs first, put your best foot forward first. Um, and just a matter of them presenting it, drawing the interest of us and what they're doing also, whether it be on social media, you know, are they invested in themselves? Do they care about their music? Are they willing to go the extra mile to push and present their music? You know, will they go and sit outside a radio station or sit outside, you know, for instance, your Tough Gong Studios in order to make sure that they see you on the way out to get you the music if they can't get it to you personally? So, you know, it's a matter of if you want it and, and you know, I mean, how badly you want it. You know, back in, in Jamaica when, you know, they, they couldn't really get into certain studios, they sleep outside the studio until that producer came to the studio. And if the producer said, oh, you have to go wait four or five hours, and that four or five hours turned to four or five days, they'd still be there four or five days. So you got to be hungry as an artist and as a presenter. Uh, my aspect is not who busts the tune. It's who creates the buzz of the song. You know, so, you know, the person, you find that person that can create the buzz, they'll get it to the person that can help bust the tune. And you know what I mean? So it's all you know, a matter of playing with the algorithms and, and, and you know, the way that things go in, you know, in this whole industry. So when you get turned on to an artist, what is it about the artist that captures your attention that makes you want to play that song repeatedly, introducing it to audiences? Their hunger. 
You know what I mean? If they're hungry and they got good talent, if they have, if like, if their talent's okay and you can work with it, but you see that they have potential and they believe in themselves, you know what I mean? We're not the gatekeeper to say, no, that person doesn't deserve to. If they work hard and it sounds all right and there's potential, then give them a chance. You know, but if it's something to say, you know, they don't really care about their music or they don't care about how they present themselves, they don't care how they talk, you know what I mean? And, and even when you're doing interviews with some of the artists, them, some of them may not show up on time. Or if you give them a time, meet me here at this time and give me your music, let me hear Wagwan. And they're late. So it's a matter of, you know what I mean? Professionalism, caring about your product and having passion and being dedicated to it and want to get better. And most importantly, taking criticism from people that have the right to criticize. Rob, do you still think that traditional media is important to getting your music and your ideas out there? A hundred percent, I do. Because there's only so much you could do on the internet. And there's only, there's a wide amount of people that you can reach. But it's like you said, radio is going to be here forever. And it's something, especially as, like you were saying, artists that are hungry and that they care about their music and they believe in it. They've always dreamed to be on the radio and hear themselves on the radio, you know what I mean? So I think it does hold a big impact, 100%. How do you use new media to get attention and to generate a buzz and to sustain focus on your artistry? That just goes back to what I was saying with the PR. I think that's one thing that artists, especially up and coming artists, and like you were saying with underground, because a lot of people go to the underground for what is new and what is hot. And I know because I've seen these artists bubble up. I've I'm, I'm been one of these artists, I am one of these artists, I'm in the underground scene and I've been blessed to be here and be able to stay relevant within the underground for 12 plus years. Because I've seen people come and go in it from the exes to the XXX Tentacions, the ski masks, everybody like that. But if I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of these people had their own push as far as like, uh, it was more so a, a, a label. And radio didn't really come into it until after. I think if you were to combine both of them, as far as digital marketing, PR, and go back to radio, because it's almost like it's a forgotten art. And I don't understand why the younger artists don't push themselves with radio, because I know I do, and I want to, you know what I mean? So. I think combining both of them would be the best way. Kekora, what makes you remember an artist? Some artists feel like digital is enough, but you as someone who is also in terrestrial radio, traditional media, what makes you remember them besides, okay, I heard this on Spotify, I saw this on YouTube, I heard this on Tidal, I, saw this on, I heard this on SoundCloud. What makes you remember them and want to keep pushing their music? The message. Okay. The message will be the most important thing. Um, they all have a different message, whatever is their life in a ghetto, happiness in a boat, mommy, divorce, whatever the subject. There's a message, there's an education, and I think this is the key. Because young people use music like a book, the same way they use a PlayStation like real life. <laughs> it, it, you, we're laughing, but it's sometimes sad because there's so much out of reality that how do you bring them back? Do you understand? So the message will be the key for me. Then obviously the look, our culture in Jamaican culture and French culture is different. Pasa, pasa music to us at the beginning, it was shocking. <laughs> but then when you see Bouillon nowadays, it's different. Some of our artists started with dance and evolved into their own thing because what we did is we joined our roots, Groca, African that we kept that incorporate into the denso or into the zook or into the, the, the salsa, whatever the artist is doing. But I think the message will be the key of the song of what I will remember first. Then there will be the look, whatever. You can be whatever they say in England because you can hear my accent. You could have green hair and men in skirt. I don't really care. What matters is what's in your soul, the love you got inside and your message. Okay. I'm not gonna push violence. I'm saying honestly, there's some songs uh, and I, I can name uh, Binny Man, which I interview in my radio show. He had a couple of songs from his new album. I said, I'll play this one, but I'm not going to play this one. 
because I respect your culture, but bend over, bend over, push it, push it, is not all there is to me to music. So the message will be, will be the key for me. All right, so I'm now going to Sp open it to Sparky, the audience. Sparky, yes. sorry, sorry to disturb your panel. Yes. I have a late addition to your panel. Uh, who's joining me? Is Trini um, here? Tr DJ Trini is here. Trini is here. Trini! Oh, <laughs> All right, big up to DJ Trini. Trini, you have the advantage of having heard the rest of the panelists speak. I would love for you to add your voice to the discussion. It's all about media mastering the evolution. As someone who has had a lot of experience um, right across the United States, because you have worked in different areas where you've had various residences, what, what is new and how can we integrate traditional media with new media? Um, hello, everyone. My name is DJ Trini. I'm born on the island of Trinidad and Tobago. What's up, Shaggy? All right. And I grew up in the United States, Brooklyn, New York. Shaggy went to my high school. <laughs> Moved to uh, the Washington, D.C. area. We're not going to talk about that. Shaggy, thank you. But anyway, um, grew up the rest of my life in the Washington, D.C. area. I uh, started DJing at a young age just for a hobby, you know, just having fun, whatever. But I got good at it, so good that the radio stations came looking for me. I got with the radio station, just so happened that that radio station today is the mothership of Radio One in the United States of America in Washington, D.C. And my boss happened to be Miss Kathy Hughes, uh, which is like the Oprah Winfrey of radio in the United States of America. And that's basically the only job I've ever had <laughs> since then. I've never worked for another radio station, and uh, this is what I've been doing. I had the chance to bring Caribbean music to radio in Washington, D.C. when nobody else was doing it. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've been doing what I love to do. And I, here I am in beautiful Jamaica, and I'm just fresh off of the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Straight off the jumbo jet. Straight off the jumbo jet. <laughs> all right. With so with all of your experience, is traditional media still relevant? And how can we pair traditional media with new media to ensure that everybody gets a bang for their buck and persons who are listening uh, really connect with the music out there? Well, I think first of all, we need to do things like we're doing right now, coming together and discussing how we can, you know, if we could have more events like this, we could bridge the gap. That's what I think. And the next thing I think also um, is getting into this new style of media, this new technology, this new social media, because that's what's running the machine right now. You know, not as many people are listening to radio anymore, as we know, because they're on TikTok and they're on YouTube and things. We just got to find a way collectively to bridge that gap. And, you know, we got some great artists out here. We're just not really hearing from them. People are not really tapping into the technology right now, and that's what I feel can really help this situation. What would make their music get to your ear using the new technology? Well, talent helps, and, um, you know, they could, you know, you could say email it, send it to me, but you got to find a way to get to these people's ear. You have to find that way. You, you can't just have talent. You got to have brains also, really, to get into this game. Not everybody's lucky, you know? So you have to use, you know, you got to use your brain. You got to use your side hustle, you know? I'm from the hood. I guarantee you to help me get to where I got today, you know, just that tough upbringing, you know? Fortunately, you know, some people may think that's unfortunate, but I, think, I look at it as being fortunate because it helped to project my career, you know, having that tough attitude. I used to go to New York City when I was living in D.C. and DJing clubs and the radio. I used to go to, I would go to Def Jam and I would press the top button on the elevator and I would go up, I'm serious, and I would see people I know working the front desk, you know, the interns and stuff, I knew them, and they got me in the door. And eventually I made it into meetings with people like Kevin Lyles and, you know, all the Irv Gotti, you know, and all of these people. And here goes little Trini, you know, little skinny Trini just trying. But those are the things helped propel me. I was, I was kind of relentless in that sense. And at the same time, I had the talent. You know, I was out there. I was out, not out there to lose. But bringing this music, you got to beat these guys' heads. I'm serious. 
You got to so, be relentless. So in other words, you're saying use the digital, use the new media, but go out there and try yes. and make the face-to-face -face connection. Yes, and you know what? You can't do anything by yourself. You cannot do anything by yourself. You need a good team. You need that one person that's not so nice. Sometimes he's, he's an a-hole, you know, but sometimes those a-holes is what you need to really, you know, do what you cannot do. You can't do everything. I can't approach people and ask them, I need a manager to, to do these things that I'm not good at. I'm the talent. I could do but so much. So it's collectively all of these things. Get a good team. Put them out there. Put out good product. And, you know, I, I, my flyers I use, I pay $30 for these flyers. Outstanding flyers. It's for some kid in, in Lagos, Nigeria. I send him $30, and he makes these incredible flyers for me. But I just don't give him the money. I, I sell him. I spread. I give it to my friends. Oh, who makes your flyers? This guy right here, but they don't charge him $30. He charges whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? But that's how we spread the whole thing. And, you know, it's just, it's marketing is everything right now. You all know, right. you see all of these untalented people, you know how they got there? Great marketing. Great marketing, you know. So collectively, it's, it's all these things. It's not easy for artists. I understand that, you know. But there's ways to do it. If you're hungry enough, you'll get it. All right, so we we'll have a very diverse panel right here. I'm going to open it to the audience so you can throw your questions at them. Who do we have first? Do we have any questions? Or have all your questions been answered? Anybody? Any, is that Joel? <laughs> all right. Up in the top right there, do we have a floating microphone? Floating microphone up in the top. All right. I'm glad you're not know wearing heels. Can you order reach up there now? <laughs> All right. Hello. My name is Jefferson. I'm from Grenada. Artist here. Um, amazing panel. Thank you for the discussion. Um, DJ Trini, you mentioned you should find a really good team, get somebody like in marketing, a good manager to say the things that you don't want to say. How do you identify those people? Getting outside, making relationships, networking, coming to events like this, putting yourself in a position to meet these people, you know? Eventually, it'll happen. Eventually, it'll happen. you have to put yourself out there. And you can't leave it, this work, for somebody else. Certain things you got to do on your own, bro. And this is one of the things you have to do, you know? They're out there. You just got to go get, put yourself out there to meet these people. So in other words, Jefferson, um, don't think that because you're handsome, you can just float around, just hit DJ Trini right as him come off the panel and say, youth, remember what you talk about? My day are right now, talk to me. Uh, do we have any other questions? All right, go right ahead. Hi, um, in my country, Barbados, DJs get a lot of criticism from young artists. Um, they, they tend to not assign blame, but say they're part of the, the, the system that tends to keep young artists down. Do you guys think that criticism is fair or that is unwarranted in most cases? Specs, Kikora? I mean, I don't know about other English islands, but for example, the radio I work for, we have different shows where we have young talents coming to express. Um, Regis Kainix has this song, Music c'est la vie, Music is life, and he has various young artists that are not well known, but he's giving them an opportunity to be live, coming with instrument, coming with their songs and present their art. For me, I actually go and seek others in the Caribbean. I don't just interview Mr. Shaggy, uh, or have just the big names, I have the young names because, like you said, you have to be hungry, you have to call me. And the person from Grenada, please do send me your music. If you like it, we will play it. At the end of the day, we have to become one another and you have to be hungry and go for it, but you have to give opportunities. You have to hands out, you have to share that love. That is the key because you can't just be sitting on your throne and say, I choose which music to go. Who am I to describe what you're going to like or what he's going to like? There's a song called Alado from five guys in Curaçao and Aruba that nobody heard, but it's a mixture of, they speak Papiamento over there, which is English, Dutch, French, Spanish, mixed all together. It sounds like compa, it sounds like zouk, it sounds like soca and reggae all in one. But if I don't play it, who's going to play it? And by playing it, everybody, when you don't force it on people, you get people to like music. And it's according to their mood, 
their feelings, their emotion. You might hear something like we got on the phone today and the first thing you did was just laugh for what I said. And music can do that to you. You can be miserable coming from a work and, and this song from this young gentleman I don't know and I would hear it and you'd be like, oh yeah, that gives me a thing. And you'll give him a chance. But you have to look for the people, not down, the people around. Because if you look down, that means you're putting yourself above. And who am I to just play just Shaggy's or Michelle Montano's song? I want to play Mr. A, B, C, Z in order to give them a chance. Because they don't specifically have a big name or know who they are, but they have talent. They have music and you have to give them an opportunity. Okay. D any of the other panelists would like to add to that? Yes, it's, it's a big discussion going on right now in Trinidad after the carnival. The, a lot of the artists are complaining, you yeah. may have heard online, yeah. a lot of the artists are complaining the DJs are only playing these 20 songs and they're not giving these other artists you know, a chance to shine. And these DJs, like, they have it locked down. There's a rumor going around that there's a Soka Mafia now, you know? Well, <laughs> so, I, think, I think Rome says there's no Soka Mafia. <laughs> right, I, right, I saw that, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. So, you know, but it's an excuse. If you want something done, get it done, period. Just, just do it, period. Go for it. Go okay. for it. You know, you know when, it's, when I'm slow, when things are going slow for me, or when I was starting out in the DJing game, the one thing that got me more books was being out, not being in the house. I, ha I knew I had to go out. You know, I had to go to these nightclubs even if I didn't want to go. I had to go and Check. it paid off. I have a question. So, sorry that Sparky. Since you have one, two, three, four radio people, yeah. I ask you that question you know, as four radio people. All right. What is, don't you have, uh, like, for instance, an obligation? to yourselves as radio personality to play a certain type of music to keep your ratings up? Um, well, the thing is... With because, with I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right. before I answer, because you might have someone that's sending them music. I just said, boy, John, you know, it's a Trini and four and I'm not playing my thing. <laughs> See? But at the end of the day, maybe Trini has an audience because I, I, I wanted to play a radio station. I have Shaggy's Bombastic Radio. And I, I open it to play everybody as much as possible. But I also have to program certain songs that are popular songs that's going to bring in an audience in to keep me on air. So sometimes when you see someone, I say, boy, I train you, I'm okay, nah, I play my thing. You ain't at that level yet to really grab that kind of an audience to keep him going. Or else if you just keep playing all your new shit and it might not be connecting, he might not have a job next week. That's what me I said. All right. So part of what I do, I work at Zip 103 FM as well as Bob Marley's Tough Gong Radio on Sirius XM. Zip has a particular format. However, we do have features on young artists and we do play music from young artists as well as established artists. I think what happens is a lot of young artists and producers, they do get frustrated when they have been putting in the work and they're not hearing their music on mainstream media. You have to get our attention Zip, for example, plays rock music, alternative music, um, gospel music, dancehall music, reggae music, electronic music, R&B, soca, hip-hop music. It's a lot of genres that we have to go through as DJs. We do play the popular songs, but we also play songs that are bubbling up, and each zip jock will put in songs once it has gone through the library because it has to be vetted because of the Broadcasting Commission, which is very stringent in Jamaica, and give it ratings. We will play it once we send the music through the library. There's a procedure there. On Bob Marley's Tough Gong Radio, we play Afrobeat Soka Reggae, right? And what I will do, because I also have a weekly show there, is I will play music from young artists, and young artists and producers will tell you, I will send them a message, I don't know them, I haven't even met some of them physically, but I discover their music on some of the platforms, and I said to myself, this sound good! And I will send them a message, and I say, yo, 
record this on a recording app on your phone. Tell me some more. Give me some background. I will put the clip in the show. I will introduce their music because it is important. It's not just about me and it's not just about mainstream. You have to introduce artists so that the cycle of life, the cycle of music can continue. A lot of artists and producers, they will take it personal when they don't hear it. A lot of them cuss me off and tell me about my ma. And then when I do play their music, them say, yo, hear my tune. They, them not remember, said them, they cussed me off like five years ago. And them slander me upon yeah. social media and you get yo. keep on blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just a process. You have to put in the work. Because if you, for example, let's say you just graduate or let's say you just got a job that is making you some money and you're going to buy a car. You're going to buy a Honda where you know about the reliability or you're going to buy Bing Bing. What are you going to buy? You're going to go with a brand that you know about the reputation. So in the same way, you also have to build your brand. Nobody now fight against you. That's in your mind. So you need to let go of that and just keep pushing through. That is very important. What percentage? Mm? What percentage of the new artists compared to your list? Like you have a playlist. So you have like, a I, don't, I don't have a playlist. No, no. no I don't have a playlist. Like, what we have, no, let, me, like let your, me speak like on Zip. Yeah. We have genres that we play every half hour. The genres change. Okay. And, and how so much of that genre is, is, is new artists? Like I would that. say maybe about 15, 20 percent. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I say, okay. Oh, can Fear I take enough. this one? Okay, as far as me, um, with me, I'm, I'm at Flow 98.7 in Toronto. And um, my station is kind of different. We play R&B. But mostly, with my station, we are mandated to play more world beat music, such as reggae, dance, all soca, afro, you know, and then R&B and hip-hop are the last things. As far as Shaggy's so, question, for me now, yeah, but, as but far as... Second, you see what you say? Mm -hmm. Just so everybody know what we'll about the select of them. His station mandates him to play a certain amount of things. So sometimes it's not just the DJ's fault why they ain't playing your shit. Sometimes the station... The programming. They, they're programming them to do some certain things because they got to have advertising and sell, and sell advertising and make things. So and, but I just want that clear for every and, artist. And it's part of the, our station's promise of performance yeah. to the, the government. But um, as I was saying, so we're mandated to play more world beat music. So... You know, all you artists out here, my station is like the Hot 97 of Toronto, except for Hot 97 plays R&B and hip hop and then everything else. We have to play reggae, dancehall, soca and afro, then everything else. Now, as far as, um, you know, selecting the songs and why we select the songs with me in Toronto, we're the fourth largest market in all of North America, right? If you look at all the... The, the charts, them and everything, you'll see that Canada is always in the top three when it comes to, you know, purchasing and consumption, whatever, however you want to put it. So uh, we're a very, very important market. Now, the way we select our songs, them, so I do a show five days a week in the evening. I do the evening show at the station. And then on Sunday, I do the reggae dance hall show, which is three hours. Now, during the week, I don't have as much freedom to play what I want to play. I have to go with what the station, you know what I mean, puts in the system. And I'm just basically like a voice, an announcer there. But during the, on the weekend now when I'm doing my reggae dance, I'll have more freedom to talk what I want to talk, play on my want play and this and that. Now, as much as I'm able to play what I want to play on the weekend, remember, I'm from a commercial radio station. So we have a thing called tune out factor, right? I can't afford to play someone's song knowing that we're going to lose clients or customers, however you want to classify them. Because that's my job on the line. That's Shawnee B's job on the line. That's Sparks' job on the line. Trini's job on the line. Every radio. So we have to make sure that we have that time spent listening, holding there. Right? We don't want thing. And then we have another thing called tune out factor. You know what I mean? You don't want people to tune out. Because at radio, the average person listens to radio, you know, in their car for about 15 to 20 minutes. That's their average drive. So now if somebody turns off the radio in that 15, 20 minutes... And then they go inside the store, go to school, go to work, go to shopping, go movies, whatever they're going to do. When they come back in that car, they change the channel. They may not change back to the channel that you're on. So we have to make sure that we keep our clients, our customers, our listeners, them. And, you know, for me, as much as yeah, we want to help the youth, them, and yeah, we we'll build them, I, I do that on that show there because I don't have the opportunity to change my place during the week. But at the same time, I have to know what I'm playing, what I'm presenting, because at the end of the day, it's still my job on the line. 
And at the end of the day, I still have to represent properly, especially because I have the only reggae dance hall show in all of Canada on commercial radio. You heard what I said? The only reggae dance hall show on radio in all of Canada, in the fourth largest market in North America. Man so I, show, I have a I show you importance. So, and, 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 and to show you the importance, I have to choose exactly the songs that I got to play because I got to represent the right, proper way. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a um, first generation Canadian to I, a gen Shaggy, can I just... Can guy, I just no, 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 I just wanted to add that? quickly. It's our job to break new artists. We get credit when we break new artists. We, our reputations grow when we break new artists. It does nothing for me trying to break Shaggy because he's broke already. If I find a new artist... No, he's not broke. He's rich. He's rich. Shawnee, fix the argument there. He's not broke. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. But you see, the thing is, I get no cr credit for uh, exposing Shaggy, making him bigger. I get credit for exposing Coffee. I get credit for exposing Massacre. I get cre credit for exposing Shensia, all these names. But you see, the crazy thing is, where some of you new artists and younger artists are ha so hard to us DJs, I've made a name for myself breaking new names, and I still get the SYMs. You don't break new artists, Shani. Me, get all of that. So sometimes as a younger artist, artist you have to understand, if we break 100 new artists today, there's going to be 100 other new artists that's going to say, you don't do nothing for the business. That's the reality. That's the reality. And I'm going to put them friends for cost That's the reality that we live in. Anyway, but just, just said, to, to question to Mr. Up. Shaggy, just to reply, working for the national radio of Guadeloupe, which is owned by France Television, there are restrictions. There are things you are not allowed to play. Uh, on the show I, I run... I had to fight to make my own programs and my whole playlist. But we do play rock, classical yeah. music, Jacques Brel, and all the other people. But it's our role to bring up new artists. And I, and I join with you. It's, it's what the point is. Otherwise, it's just repetitive. And we yeah. hear the same song every day. What your name, General? Jernix. Um, so pleasant evening, everyone. I've been waiting 10 minutes, and I hope you guys know that that is testament to how bad I want this. All right, so my name is Jernix, recording artist out here in Jamaica, and I just want to add to the discussion here. One thing I've heard is the accountability that should be shared among artists who are up and coming, and I think Shawnee B alluded to it, Shaggy himself, and also DJ Sparks. Where is the accountability on those who've already made it in the industry? I think creating playlists is one, but I think when you get to that level, talent is something that goes beyond our imagination and it is something that we should always hold ourselves accountable to bust the next act. Because even me as a man who you know, broke yet into the industry or you know, make it yet, I think it is still my opportunity to make it better for somebody else. So I'm just urging you know, everyone on the panel and everyone who think that while we have to work, I want to stress to you guys also that it is equally important to get into the nitty gritty, to make time out of the schedule where, so if the radio station say, hey, may I have to play such amount of song, may I have to carve out at least 14 hours between a week, venture some of find at least five new artists whom we can suggest to a new playlist, whom we can get up a next level. So I think it's also important and I think it's something that should be stressed across the industry because no one will ever know us even when we put in the work because I've, t I've emailed almost three persons on that panel and I've never gotten a okay. response. <laughs> However, My name is Kikora. Okay, so, 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 so I, I don't know if you're listening to me keenly but the music for Zip has to go through the library. The and once it is vetted and cleared, according to broadcasting standards, it's sent out to the jocks. The jocks then choose, right? Also, the jocks will go out, like myself, we discover music, we suggest it to the librarian, they'll listen, they'll vet it, and they'll send it out. The station doesn't force you to play anything. They send out the music, they vet it, and the jocks will choose. Same thing for Bob Marley's Tough Gong Radio. Right on my weekly show, I actually have to try and discover artists. I play some songs that are known because people like to hear things that are familiar to them as well. If you go home to your girl and 
all the time you always get back shot and then all of a sudden she come with lizard lap and one bag of something. You look on her and say, I want to go on your soul. And then you go up on her Instagram and you see her a new thing and you say, I wonder if I really girls now. She go. So there is a certain amount of repetition that is important. And even then, even then, when you do find young artists, you have to play them with some form of repetition because each jock has a limited number of hours and specific genres that they have to play. And the more you get the repetition is the more that it sinks in. So yes, we do have to take accountability, but you also have to maintain your presence. You also have to keep knocking. Nike is an established brand. They still advertise. Beyonce, big, 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 she still have to put things out there. Taylor Swift, well popular, and she's still up in your face. Kim Kardashian, big, she's still up in your face. Shaggy out your saw 200 years and still at the marketing. Personally, um, on my show, I can have between 20 and 26 songs with my guests around it, and I introduce when I have somebody, I play at least three of their new songs. But out of the 26 songs I will play in one evening, I can guarantee that 18 will be new every single Saturday. I spend my time when I come from work because I have various up jobs. I come home and I go and dig on that net. I go and dig to find out, oh, that's new, that's new. You would not hear, apart from six, seven songs, you would not hear them more than three times over the, over the month, apart from Shaggy's one. <laughs> Question. All right, you can hear me? Um, I want to know what success or effort any or all of you have made to leverage your traditional media um, brand into third party playlists on the DSPs. Shawnee, I've seen some of yours, and I know you've done some takeover playlists, but what kind of challenges have you guys had in the streaming space if you've tried to do that, or is that an initiative that you think is important because we're talking about going from traditional media to new media? Hello? Um, okay, my, my first problem, and, and I hate to admit what I'm about to say, sometimes I want to play a song and I cannot reach the management or the artist to get the proper song. And I feel sad I have to rip it from YouTube. That has happened a couple of times, I have to say, because in Guadeloupe we are forgotten. I'm sorry to say, they don't think of the French islands that listen to reggae, to dancehall, to soca. When we go to our parties, we have um, maybe eight genres of music playing at night. From compa, zouk, soca, reggae, dancehall, hip-hop, R&B, and soul. Minimum, and African music. So I felt so sad, and I felt terrible. And I had to call the artist. I said, listen, I was looking for you. Now I found it. I played your song. And that's why I said... It's difficult, but you have to be hungry. Come and knock on the door, go and see it. Send. You can't send them a tape, but you have to be able to get to that radio. And if each radio don't have that red line, hotline, or whatever, a mail to send, how do you get the music? Mm -hmm. That is the challenge I've had. How can I get your song? If I didn't meet you today, and have, how do I play your song in my radio show? That's one of the hardest things. It's almost impossible, to be honest with you. It would have to be an Instagram situation or something like that. So I do get it. But you going as far as rip it from YouTube, that shows the initiative and shows how much you care about the music. You know what I mean? That you actually do want to break these new artists. So that alone, I take my hat off to. Right. You know. But for example, if I'm on Instagram, I try to reach some people. Because I don't have millions of followers, are you going to look at my request to say, hey, I'm a radio DJ, I like to play your song, I like to interview you. Are you gonna look at somebody that just barely have 2,000 followers? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, to be with, with, I do too. With me, as far as um, when trying to get with the artist them and all that, sometimes if I don't know the name of the song and everything, I have to just go to use the technology from my phone and Shazam it. If I find the name, I go straight to Apple Music or iTunes and I just buy the song. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem I is with buying the song though, because, yeah, I'm, I'm supporting the artists and all that, but a lot of you artists don't have the edited version on Apple, on iTunes. Yes. You know what I mean? And we need radio edits, so help us help you. Okay. But not all of them as well are on Apple Tune. 
That's the problem. All right, um, sorry. My name is Karel. I came from Haiti, but I have a business idea for you guys. Um, let's disrupt that situation. Radio has challenges. The artists are facing challenges. Let's create a global Caribbean music distribution platform where the media can go on and discover new artists, where the artists can send those songs to that platform, even if they pay a fee or something. Yeah. But we know that all the legal aspect is, is there. They have copyright. This is not something where people, anyone can go and download music for free, but just a platform where the media will have access to those songs, even just to discover new artists from <coughs> all the islands. I think this is why we're here today. This is an idea. I love your idea, except that if you are a young artist and your music doesn't get featured on that, they're going to have the same complaint that they yep. have for mainstream media. That's that is right. you That's and your right. friend. Then. No, we can just so, give them so clear you, uh, access to it. Whereas I love the idea of centralization and it makes it easier to find, I feel like we're still going to have the same complaints. And then you want... have to have some form of decentralization so they feel that it is more on an open playing field. The but I love the centralization yeah, idea. For me, I'm in Haiti. Um, I do radio as well, but we, uh, we have more freedom than you guys. Um, but at the same time, if I don't follow certain artists or follow certain medias, I don't know what's trending. Uh, you know, or if I don't follow those playlists on Apple Music or Spotify, I don't know what's new. So I think like having a platform like this is only for promotional purposes. And artists want maybe put their album in there, but maybe one single or the new song that they're releasing. And you guys and the media will have private or limited access to it, I would say, where you can go and have like a short bio of the artist, get uh, their social media handles, uh, phone numbers of their management team, something like that. I think that's what the PR company are doing, but they're doing it only for their clients. So now let's create it on a global scale. So I'll tell you one of the things that we actually have in Jamaica is the Entertainment Registry and the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports has been trying to get a number of producers and artists and a lot of other creatives to actually register. But one of the things with Jamaicans, we not trust the system. So they not register. Even though it makes it easier for persons outside of Jamaica to actually discover them there. So there's also that. But specs. I was going to say that now, if there is this, uh, this organization of centralization and all that, you know, it, it's a great thing, but you still have to deal with the formatics of things. So a lot of people see, oh, there's an organization I can put my song in there and all the radio people and TV people and the influencers and we're playing my song and all that. But before you put your song on there, it's very important to have your song registered and make sure that you have the rights to your songs. Because I've seen it so many times where people send me music you can't find it. The reason why you can't find a lot of their songs on whether it be Spotify or YouTube and all that, because they don't have, you know, all their I's dotted and their T's crossed and all that. So even if you were to get the, the music and play their music, how's the artist benefiting from it? Yeah, they might get heard and yeah, somebody might find out who they are, but how are they really benefiting from it, from it if they don't have their stuff registered and dealt with? So it's kind of like a, you know, a two-sided knife. In France, we have something called La Sassem which basically you're supposed to declare every song and you get your rights and your, your money on it, basically. But a lot of radio don't pay, the, the small one, and some artists don't register all their songs so they can't benefit from it, and it only works for France. So if that song is playing in Jamaica, it's never going to be added, or vice versa. So that centralization idea is good, but then on the rights, and the benefits, how can everybody can win? That's what maybe we need to think about. Yeah. Yeah, um, my name is Tufinga, I'm a producer. I think who don't know me? All right, just uh, meet me now. Well, me know Sparks, me know Shani B, me know Specs. As DJs, we play new talent all the time. And for the new talents here, would I like one of you tell them like which artist you saw at a young stage and take them song and play it and bust them to the world? Because me as a producer, me can call out all of the names of the all of the young artists them on my foot on. So would I love 
Shani B, if you be a part of the panel there and tell all of these DJs, just tell the artists that you helped to put on. Check. Uh, I think one of the, one of the artists um, that I think I saw that complete kind of journey with is Massacre. I remember it was, I think, 2011 that I started to hear his music. And it was in a time where I was going through a rough part of my life, actually, in 2012, when my dad and my mother passed away. And I remember recording him. It was him and Governor at the time. And the re reason why I did, I, I went for those artists, because as a broadcaster, I said, Beanie and Bunty had already boss. Cartel and Mavada had already boss. So I was looking for a next set of artists to work with. And with Massacre, I put in a lot of work in the streets in Jamaica uh, with the freestyles that we did and any of the sessions that we did. And I think it was, it was last week, actually, I, I did an interview with him up at his house in the hills. And I saw that youth that I recorded in Haven there doing a freestyle with just his engineer to see he's got this big yard up in the hills with his family up there. So when I see that kind of journey, I feel very, very proud. Leela, Savannah, Savannah definitely. I remember listening to Savannah on like a holiday with my son. And I remember hearing her record and ringing um, Winter James and saying, yo, you see this girl here, special talent. And then boom, 2020, Leela, Savannah, Naomi, Jazzalise, 18 million views. Four young ladies that nobody really knew about on that level. And then to see 18 million views with them. And I stand up in shows, festivals, on the jam rock cruise, and I see when they, when they perform those songs, and to see the response from the audience, that's when you work with an artist from zero to something. But it has to be a relationship between the artist and the DJ. It's got to be a mutual thing. It's got to be a... It's got to be based on respect, that when I put in that call or they put in that call, we work together. All right, they're saying time, but I will say, let me, let me just use two. Omi was popular overseas. Omi was not popular in Jamaica. And I have a feature on Zip that I call Spark It or Park It. And so I played Cheerleader, and that song played for about 15 minutes. Chronics, I did not meet until about two years and odd later. I was actually introduced to Chronics music out of Nairobi, Kenya. And I said, uh, out of Nairobi, I mean. And I said, yo, who this? And I started playing Chronics. I remember when I took it to the station, them said, yes, Parks, I true you love reggae. I said, nah, I feel like this youth, him I boss. Introduced that. Also introduced um, Lila Aike. Also introduced coffee to the point where boom boom message and say, yo, I owe that. And toast, you know, um, burning and all of them song they put it out there. So those are just some of the countries. There are so many. I know that I'm going to be leaving out a lot, but the man over here said, tell me time. But those are just some of the artists. Because now you, you could appear cheerleader in the dance. Cheerleader wasn't even played on the radio. And I brought it to the station and I say, yo, who is this? I'm going to say, Tell me where this artist come from. Nobody could tell me. I said, yeah, Clarendon and them come from. Them say a lie. I said, yeah. So those are just some of the... And I didn't even meet Omi until much, much later on. So it's just, you know, some of the... Even Massacre. Um, when Massacre came up before him, really, break, break, break. A major producer, I won't call his name. Um, the major producer said, which young artist would you recommend? Now, I had never met Massacre yet. I was only playing Massacre's music. And I said, this artist. And it, Massacre will tell you, him say, yo, Sparks, are the first one I sang them, get so much listen so fast. But I'll just leave that there because it's not everything that happened you want to discuss in public like that, you understand? But, and it was no payola, nothing. It was no collecting, no money for nothing because anybody in the industry will tell you, I will hear a song, but just take it up and play it and like it for those who know my reputation. All right, um, as far as me for Canada, everybody. You know what I mean? I come to Jamaica, I search for artists, them, you know, see what's hot in the streets or whatever the case is, or even go to the studios and ask producers and engineers. And, you know, as far as when it comes to Canada, I help to introduce them to the world and, you know, from the Canadian side. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. You mentioned a word called payola. You know, anybody out here that deals with payola, you don't have faith in yourself. You don't, you know what I mean, appreciate your music. And uh, if you have to pay for somebody to play your music, then your music doesn't deserve to get played. Personally, I just believe in the United States Caribbean. 
And I believe we can all play one another's music, share it, learn from one another, and we unite. We will move forward and make the world, because the world listens to Caribbean music, even they're trying to rename it in some way. But I think through the new technologies and the new media, we can go even further and be one in the Caribbean. Well, I just want to say we run out of time. <laughs> and one of the time, we can't go downstairs, go eat some patty and some chicken and some something, and tea and some something. <laughs> But I just want, for closing, thanks to CJ Sparks for actually doing a wonderful job um, moderating and thing. And I just want to say for each one of these DJs, I know they ask asking for name out the people in my, where, when I don't think that was as important as the fact that you guys, I've known you all for years, I know you guys are actually pioneers and people who really go hard for the culture. I know you, Specs, and I know what you do in Canada I know how your station is. I know we see you at every party. Sparks, we see you at every single party. We see how much you, you go. We see all your commentary online. <laughs> right? <laughs> Trini, where you do out at DC, right? And you stay there. You're on your mix shows. You always promote the culture. You know what I'm saying? What you do in Guadeloupe, you've been, play, you've been interviewing me for so many years, right? And still do it. And of course, we all know Sean. Sean, and I've ever mentioned, he has not just the platform of radio, but he's also the platform on on the net because him going around and really, because him can't tell us, I call him and cuss him when him just get the work. Come and tell him, look on the rest of them. I'm going to say, create a brand for you. Didn't I say that? I said, create a brand for yourself. Look at the guys that come before you. They're going to take the token black guy on BBC One Extra and replace him with a new one. And I said, you must create a brand for yourself and own content for yourself. Didn't I have that conversation with you a long time ago? So, and he's done that. Not only has he done it so well, in mentioned that the first time I learned about coffee was seeing the theme thing with the Dupont BBC. And I think that's how a lot of people, so it was really one of the guys that was responsible for breaking coffee, this guy right here. So it's not to put you on the spot, and I get my virgin to ask a question, but it's, it's really the fact that I know that all of you guys have been people who have been soldiers for this culture over and over, and we applaud you, Thank 100%. You. Merci. Thank you. Thanks to everybody for coming. Um, what do you say about tomorrow night? No? What do you say about now? Tomorrow? Programming before lunch is free. Them did that for Pedro? Yeah. <laughs> or sponsor, but oh yeah. So tomorrow, no, tomorrow programming before lunch, is free. Uh, YouTube are sponsored. And everybody will be able to come in for free except for Adam Gross who will have to pay. That's about it. <laughs> Big up ineffable records in the house, everybody. What time is lunch? What time is lunch? Uh, three, two, three, nine, nine, nine. One o'clock? Oh, what are lunch is you mean I might need some information. I think, I, I think of, oh, before, two, before, before one o'clock. Everything before one o'clock is free. So it's YouTube tomorrow, all right? Thank you all for coming. I hope it was informative. And um, see you all. Give thanks. thanks. For having me. Mm -hmm.